have been using it since 1996, even so I couldn't really figure out exactly when I started. But I remember what motivated me. I did not like to lecture, write things on the board and have students mainly copy the stuff I write on the board. I was teaching advanced physics classes and this was kind of the model of how people proceeded. And I wanted people to discuss the material. So I started handing out Xerox copies of my lecture notes to the students right from the beginning. And I always had fights with this copying machine which jammed and as soon as something became available that let me put these notes on the web, I jumped to it to just get away from the copying machine. That was my main motivation initially. And in 1996, front page became available. And that was one way of really easily put your notes on the web. And then I started using it. <laughs> Initially, I put my notes on the web. And then as soon as you use the web, you figure out that there are a lot of other things you can do to engage students. Because in physics, one of the big things nowadays is that everybody knows that students learn better when you actively engage them. So you always look for things to actively engage students. And uh, technology then has given me many opportunities to do that. But I teach classes from introductory physics to graduate classes. And obviously in all these different classes I have to do different things because it's a totally different student population and it's totally different subjects that I'm teaching. So. In my introductory physics classes, I use, we do online assignments, we do online tests, we do online laboratories. For the laboratories, I use video analysis on the web, which I have constructed. Uh, I use spreadsheet work for the students, uh, for visualization, sometimes for simulation. I use simulations produced by other people to engage the students. That's the main things I do in the introductory physics classes. I teach a Physics 250, which is a sophomore level course, which I teach in a studio physics setting where students actually work uh, on computers alone or in groups, and there's very little lecturing that uh, uses the same techniques. Then in my like graduate physics class, it is a class to prepare students for our PhD qualifying exam, to take students that come from many different schools and go over and review the things every physicist needs to know if they want to be a PhD physicist and pass a qualifying exam. And there we mainly solve problems and discuss problem solving techniques and review the fundamental physics. So technology as far as using animation and this out there, but there I use technology because we linking our classrooms at UTSI and at uh, UTK and we have a video link. So I teach students, I have five students at UTSI and maybe 15 here at UTK and we have a video link established so I can see them and they can see me and that's on a, done on a TV, and then we also share a desktop. We do that with NetMeeting, and so we can write on the desktop. We use a smart classroom with a smart board so we can write and share that. So that's kind of the, so it's different things for different <laughs> classes. I, I use Blackboard as a portal to all my classes. Um, I use the discussion board in uh, Blackboard. I use the announcements in Blackboard. I use um, the course documents for material that uh, might be like a copy out of a book that I don't want to publish on the web that is only for uh, a page out of a book for the class or things. I use that. Um, and obviously I use uh, the class lists. You get all the <laughs> the student list, the email addresses and all this. And I think it's very important to use Blackboard nowadays because it is a portal into the student's academic life for all our introductory students. Uh, they are so used to it and that's the first thing they check 
when they come in the tutorial center or the computer lab because they have the links to all their introductory classes in there. And the announcements pop up. They don't miss it. It's uh, very important to use it, I think. Students nowadays use technology. They have grown up with this technology and for them it is as natural as using the coffee maker, <laughs> things like that. And um, they use technology for communication and they use technology for entertainment and they expect to also use it in their education. And it is their main communication tool and so I think for faculty it is incredibly important to have to understand how students using technology for communicating and to have the skills to communicate with the students that way. I think that's the most important thing and I also think that here at UT where we have a course managing management system such as Blackboard, it's important that faculty have the knowledge about that they're informed about Blackboard and they use it to again communicate with all the students, to not miss them because this is where the students check for their academic communication. It's not maybe not that important that they actually put their material on Blackboard if they think that's not appropriate for their material, but at least that they use it as a portal to their students to communicate with their students because that's one uniform thing that we have here at UT and I think that's very important. I certainly have observed a difference. Uh, technology is for the students nowadays nothing new any longer. Everybody uses computer, everybody uses cell phone, ev any kind of smart gadgets. Um, the internet is the main tool that students use to get information. So you don't have to tell the students any longer, well, you have to do this or this. They do it automatically. As far as how it has affected my teaching, it has probably not affected the way I teach very much because I expected the students from the beginning to do this. But I get much less questions, I get no questions any longer about the technology. While when I used it like 10 years ago when I started using it, there were always a few students that needed extra help and were intimidated by the technology, but that doesn't happen any longer. Nobody's intimidated any longer. I think the most effective thing that the university is doing is provide the infrastructure so it can happen. Uh, and I think we have pretty good infrastructure here at UT. And for example, having the Instructional Technology Center is a big uh, plus that we have here at UT where people that uh, are unfamiliar with uh, certain aspects of using technology can get help. I think IT does a pretty good job of uh, making faculty aware of what's going on, what new opportunities exist. I think what the Senate and the Senate IT committee should do better is communi communicate with faculty about what's going on as far as technology is concerned. And it's not so much as telling you can do this and you can do this, but to somehow come to a consensus and then through the Senate bring this down to the faculty that uh, we as faculty really believe that now IT is an important part of every instructional setting and technology is an important part of every instructional setting and that we as a faculty come to the understanding that we all should make at least some common use of it, such as the Blackboard tool or something like that. And that it doesn't, that it's not something that is imposed on the faculty, but that the faculty by themselves endorses and brings out as something that can really in turn enhance our teaching mission. And I hope we can do this somehow in the IT committee. And that's, I think, what I want to still do is somehow find the mechanism to bring that forward. <laughs> I really like teaching and I like teaching physics and 
teaching this technology makes it much more interesting than teaching in the old-fashioned way. And while you teach this technology, you also teach students about technology. And while I said that most students now are quite uh, used to technology and expect it to be in the classroom, students are very good with what is kind of the what you see is what you get part of the technology. If it has a button that you can click and if something happens, if you do that, students know how to do that. But students do not know very well how to extend the use, how to add something to what's already given to them. Uh, and I think my classes do a little bit of that now. I kind of like that. <laughs>